experienced tragedy when four members of the group were killed in a road accident in 1996. I mean, uh, the only survivor of the fatal accident, Moses Siogane, is now a business mogul who is determined to create value and better uh, the lives of people from his community. Now, the internationally acclaimed South African trumpeter is embarking on an initiative in his hometown of Jericho in the Northwest Province set to improve the lives of its residents. He joins me now this morning to share more on his project. And a very good morning to you, Pramos. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Simpio. How are you doing? Good, man. It's, yeah. it's such an absolute pleaser having you. Uh, but, yeah, before yeah. we start the interview, we've got a special message from our viewer. Let's take a look. Uh, Just Quinin says, uh, well, what a beautiful song. Volume so high and singing loud. How would you respond to that? You know, it, it, it always makes me cry, you know, yeah. because the song itself talks. It's got a volume itself. The message is so volume. And it's got so much substance. Precisely, yeah. yeah. You know, when, when Frank wrote that song, I think, you know, he wrote that song uh, in the early 80s and surprisingly actually sending messages right now. Mm. And then in the late, you know, tw you know 21st century, mm. you know, we talk in 2018 right now and the song is still so powerful and it's amazing how in that two or three minutes or so that you performed this song it uh, took so many people back to the era of San Komota while the other guys are still alive yeah, yeah. Sepo, Tsula. Sepo Tsula is the man you know he's my inspiration I live that man I loved that man I I was hoping to grow to become Sepo Tsula one day right. and you know Unfortunately, the Sangomota tragedy actually, you know, was, was just a major loss. Right. And another thing, I guess, uh, his, his departure at Sangomota, you left a major gap. And somebody had to do some of his voices, you know, voiceovers over the live performances and, you know, on, on, uh, as well as in the series. Right, right. Let's yeah. now talk about your recent initiative, Villa di San Komota. Yes. And, uh, well, I presume uh, it's, it's named after San Komota itself, like the home of San Komota, to keep the legacy going. Precisely. Yeah, uh, Villa di San Komota, Villa, you know, is Spanish. Villa, home, D of San Komota. Okay. The idea behind was just to keep the legacy going. You know, Frank Lepa was the founder of San Komota. He passed on. You need to let go of uh, his asset, but you have to. Somebody had to take the initiative of keeping the music and the legacy going. I I I built a restaurant in a remote village called Jericho, inspired by you know my church, Lutheran Church. I was playing trumpet at the Lutheran Church, and then I grew into the Sangomoto business. And you know, amazingly, so Frank told me that you know. I see you as a businessman, I just don't see you as a musician. Yes. I, because wa papa, you know, you why can I get and I was like, yeah, of course. I mean, Sangomoda is just a tool or the music itself is just a tool to a social uh, 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 you know communication with, with, with the people, with the business people. Yes. And then at the later stage, you know, when Sam Komoda uh, was involved in an accident, I decided to go cooperate. And then at the later stage, I decided to just go do my, go on with my own uh, 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 business. Right. I and, and the late Hugh Gela was a trumpet lecturer? Yeah. How did that you get old to know man, him? That old man was very tough. <laughs> it was not easy. I remember when I was employed with Sam Komoda, uh, he just got into the studio and he was like, how old are you? And I said, I was 17 and I was, he said, I think you could do better because I started this trumpet at the age of 12. Wow. Now, uh, you know, you are 17, you can imagine the gap. It was just a, a very difficult instrument to play. Remember, I just came from church straight into Sangomoda and boom, I was all over the world performing with legendary artists through the inspiration of Brahu, obviously. Right. And then the nicest thing about it, you know what I experienced, after the accident, he actually gave me a trumpet that was played by Louis Armstrong. Wow. Yeah? <laughs> Some commander news are nice, right? <laughs> Now, you are very passionate about giving back and uplifting the community. So how are you bettering the lives of the people of Jericho through the work that you do? I got involved with a number of charity organizations at home, like organizations at home. I mean, there's a group of young boys who actually formed a team. They give, you know, sanitary pads to, you know, kids who are actually poor of the poorest, shoes as well, and, you know, they, you know, uh, uh, 
you know they they, they they have formed a team every event that they do they actually give out personally i have taken kids to school i have done so much for the community it, it is within my blood it is within my heart you know i believe in that i believe some people should not suffer if you have lend a hand you know and what do you think the people of jericho need desperately need jobs okay jobs 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 everywhere in the country is jobs 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 we come from a very poor background as community of Jericho. You know, we, 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 Jericho is a very old village. And, you know, during Buputa Zona era, you know, we were oppressed by apartheid and so on. Our parents had to go to Johannesburg to go and dig gold. You know, they had to go and work at the farms. They had to go and be domestic workers and so on. So it was within us. In 1990, when Mandela was released, we, already, we had already experienced the tough life. Sure. And, you know, thanks to the new South Africa that actually built us to be strong. And then we went out to Johannesburg and we went, I went back home to Wenkla. And the nicest thing about it, we have a number of... Uh, you know, uh, uh, businesses that have developed from where I've started. Indeed, indeed. Uh, you know, we have to go to launch right now. Today we have sparkling towers. We have, about, you know, upcoming young guys who are actually uh, putting in efforts toward developing our village. Okay, Pramoses, thank you so much for joining us, man. We appreciate it. And that was thank fast. you so much yeah. for helping us relieve those moments. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, we just spoke to Sankomota member Moses Seogane about this, his business venture, Villa de Sankomota, which aims to actively kick off uh, by celebrating various cultural activities throughout uh, uh, the year 2019, including Africa Day, Freedom Day and Youth Day. This is Morning Live. Let's go for coffee.